All right, we're back with another episode of the Trend Talk Stories podcast. Today I have a special guest. Autumn. All right, so... (laughs) (laughs) Autumn is very special to the Trend Talks platform for several reasons. Um, So, as y'all know, it's our five-year anniversary, right? So, five years ago, when I was posting a whole bunch of Instagram clips of this idea or this concept I have for a Trenton documentary. Um, I was posting a whole bunch of stuff on my story, and she just kept blowing me up. She was like, boy, you need to be on YouTube. And at that time, like, Autumn was was very, like, as far as around here, she was advanced as far as being into the technology of, you know, YouTube and all that, all that stuff going on. I just was... I just had a camera, you know, so she kept saying it, kept saying it. I'm ignoring her. I'm ignoring her <laughs> to the point where she made the page. Like, like, am I, am I can lie? No. She made the page and the name was available. I'm like, all right, I got to do it now. So I had all the clips ready. I've been doing videos, so it was pretty uh, easy for me to get used to it. So. And she actually made the first logo, too. She made the page. She made the first logo. So I made the first video, and I dropped it. And then we had, like, 90 followers for the first night. And the rest is history. But if Autumn probably wasn't going to blow me up to get started, I probably would have still just been posting Instagram stories. But I would have eventually got around to it, but it's just the procrastination. And sometimes you need that person to... Mm -hmm. To give you that push, you know. So I just always wanted to thank you for that. Like I'll go on other people podcasts and talk about it, but I never fully talked about it to my audience. You get mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So let them know how like this was really like something that everybody kind of put together as a community, you know, because I wasn't I didn't see what it was gonna be at first, you know. And so that's, and that's funny though, right? Cause like even just knowing, like, knowing myself, I'm very persistent. So, like, and it's nothing for me to harass people, especially when I see, you know, hustlers. Like, I'm a do-it-myself kind of girl, grind it out. And, mm-hmm. like, you are, too. So, it was like, he was playing, but, like, I knew it was special. So, shout out. Look what it's come to. Look what it's become. Word up, it's crazy. Yo. So, it's like, and at the time, you had, you had your brand at the mm-hmm. time, too. So, it was like. You were somebody that was already in the marketing industry in a way that mm-hmm. was testing the waters. So it was like seeing what you was doing, I'm like, that shit like it's a lot of work. But I was already into content, like I mean, I was passionate about the content, but I wasn't building a page. I'm like, what? This was foreign like five mm-hmm. years ago. There was nothing like this. Nothing things like this weren't around five years ago. I agree. You get what I'm saying? A lot of stuff like Content creation, marketing, pushing your brand, making a blog, making a, a e-commerce store, um, whatever it may be. A lot of that stuff was not around. So we were basically like, you know, trying to be innovators into a new industry or bring that industry to our surroundings. It might have be mm-hmm. in Hampton. Well at your school Mm -hmm. but around here we didn't have that i agree and i mean i just think about like destiny helpers i really believe in like destiny helpers like people who push you forward and see things when you don't see it right like i seen something even when you didn't see it and like even for myself i feel like even what's so fashionable people even like you have always seen things in me that i i never seen it took time and to get around mm-hmm. that curve even now when I think about it like it's crazy it's been five years and look how much has changed look how much progress has been made right so let's talk about uh, your brand let them know how you got started we're gonna be here all year well talk about 2018 and then let's let's transition from there let's talk about 2015 before I feel like before you can get to even 2018 you gotta talk Fast. about 2015 and it's like 2015 was was small, but I feel like it was major, right? So we was still, I was still going to TCA, and I don't know. It was I feel like I was transitioning. I wanted to be somebody different. I wanted I felt myself growing out of Trenton, and I wanted to just express myself. In 2015, there was no fashion. Like I didn't know any girls that was into fashion here. Not really. You know, people could dress, but like to yeah. be in the fashion and like to want to learn how to style and stuff like that. I didn't know anybody that was doing that. So like Donovan was like, you need to make a blog. And when I was looking at all the fashion blogs, I didn't see nobody look like me. Like, it was nobody that was looking like me trying to make fashion blogs. And I'm like, 
all right, let's just do it. And I literally went around school, asked people, like, you think I should do this? You think I should do this? And a lot of people said no. They was like, why are you going to do that? Like, why would you do that? But Donovan kept saying, nah, you need to do it. You need to do it. And I'm like, all right, what's the name going to be? Like, we need to make something really cool, really cute. And he was like, what if we just, and we was playing around with names for like weeks. And he like, what if we name it so fashionable? But like, let's change something. Let's make it different. And I'm like, all right, how can we change this? So we literally was writing it out, like writing out so fashionable, playing with different letters. And then we changed that V and made it an A and it's kind of been history. So then in 2018, so fashionable became a brand. It's been five years. It's crazy. I was at Hampton and like at Hampton, I always talk about how Hampton really saved my life because like going to Hampton, it was girls who was really in the fashion, who had connections that could really propel me forward and like gave me a lot of game, game that I couldn't find nowhere. You know what I'm saying? So then it was 2018 and that was when I first released my first t-shirt and here we are five years later. Wow. Well, so talk about the, the Hampton culture mm. and what you received um, from TCA to Hampton and I mean, if you want to, you could also talk a little bit about TCA, where you were around creatives at that time, too. Mm, n yes and no. I always, I, when I think about, like, the time at TCA, yes and no, because, I mean, I always hung with people who were older than me, and, like, like, I always talk about Donovan because me and Donovan were, like, the best of friends, and he really put me on with a lot of people up north in North Jersey and New York who were in a fashion and style, so I feel like that was the first, like, my breakout into it. But, like, before I even talk about college, though, do you think college is a scam? Because I feel like a lot of people had that debate. Um, yeah, I just had this conversation with one of my um, other interviews who also was a college grad. Um, we say it comes with, depends on the person. You get what you give, like... If you spending your time partying and like for instance, my first year I went to LaSalle. I was mm -hmm. I was paying about twenty five K. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying, out of pocket. It was going down a little bit, but my dad had it at the time. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. I was paying about fifteen hundred a month and we was just breaking it down. Mm -hmm. But stuff started to slow down. Mm -hmm. And me personally, I'm like, I ain't doing shit here but partying. This nigga paying yeah. fifteen hundred. Yeah. And I'm partying. So like I feel like if I'd have went Continuing through that way, I would have got scammed. But me thinking smarter, I found a school that was cheaper. I, mm -hmm. you know, found a school that I liked. I could play basketball at. That was in my major, you know. So and my, my dad never had to pay nothing again. Mm. So I feel like it's it's business. You know, yeah. you you get what you give. But also there are schools that's worth the money. Yeah. But you also need to calculate the return because you know in business it's like what you what you put in is what you're trying to get back. So if you spend if you fifty thousand dollars in debt, you're trying to make at least three hundred k, five hundred k, within the next couple of years or so. You know, whatever your long term plan is. So if you're looking at it from a business level, then um, you may lose or you may win. I always ask people that though because every time I talk to people who went to HBCU, they never say it was a scam. And I don't, and I personally don't believe that college is a scam, right? To some extent, like. Money, capitalism, it make the world go around. Like, it is what it is, but the opportunities and experience you don't get right. back, right? So, like, I went to Hampton, and coming from Trenton, like, I didn't, it's like, I didn't really see anybody that was making six figures. I didn't know nobody that was making six figures. I didn't know mm -hmm. that there was even, I thought, first and foremost, growing up, I thought that, like, my parents had it. Like, you know what I'm saying? I, we knew it was middle class, but I thought we was high middle class. And I went to Hampton and seen girls that really had it, seeing guys that really, like, paying for a $50,000 school out of pocket, and it was black. Like, I was shocked. It was like a culture shock to me. Like, I couldn't believe it was people out here that wasn't struggling. Like, and it was like, I'd never seen that before. And I, we came up in an era, like, people were on Instagram, but, like, your Instagram was just people that you knew or knew of, like, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like, and it was a lot of people who lived the same exact life as you. Like, yeah. being from Trent, everybody kind of lived similar. Like, you know what I'm saying? We was all into the same different, the same things. Like, so I went to Hampton and started to find so many people that were black but didn't live life like me, I was shocked. Like, And it, of course, it was groups of kids who were like me, but it was kids who really struggled to get to college and made the most of it. But it was kids who were wealthy that were black that was at an HBCU, and I couldn't believe it. That changed my life because it was like opportunities is real. Like, you just got to apply yourself. So going to college was like really the best thing I could have ever did. And I had to go away. Like, Hampton is six hours from Jersey. I came home once a year, maybe twice a year, like. Nah, nobody ever seen her. <laughs> it's probably, when did I ever, I probably seen you maybe at a Christmas tournament. Maybe. Once, 
Like maybe. last five, six years. Maybe. But <laughs> she's screaming heavy on the maybe. Maybe. But like, nah, you didn't see all them. Like, I feel like a lot. And we experienced that with a lot of people that went to the schools in that area. Like, it's like y'all just never came back. Like, I just realized it was so much more to life. Like, I don't know. I feel like being from Trenton, I, I seen it and done it all. I feel like I reached the ceiling. So, like, now I need to go somewhere else where there is no ceiling and, like, mm -hmm. see what I can do with that and make more of it. And honestly, being from Trenton and living in Trenton, I just, I really wanted to run away. Like, I felt like being here, it was nothing else for me to do. Like, I, I did it all. So, like, going to Hampton, I was like, this is my getaway. This is my chance. And, like, I never came back for real. Like... I come back every once in a while and people always be like, you never hear like, when can we link? I'm like, girl, you got to come to me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't be here no more. And yeah, <laughs> I really, I don't be here. She no dead more. serious, y'all. <laughs> but like, I love my city. You know what I'm saying? And I really like my goal is to put money into the city. I feel like, especially being in fashion, even now, I don't know nobody that's, that's here when I be looking or asking that do fashion, that do the arts. You know, they, when you look at the news, they're taking away art programs. They're taking, and that's what kids need. That's mm -hmm. what people need. Like, it's a lot of black people that are talented that don't have resources. So it's like, what if I just was the person to get out, get the money, and bring it back and put it in the community? You know what I'm saying? So, like, that's how I think. I think big picture about it. Yeah, I mean, you, you're on your path, and... And I definitely agree with you. College was a great escape because me personally, uh, 2014, 15, it was very dangerous, mm -hmm. you know? So me mm -hmm. at school, it also provided a safe space for my friends to come up for a weekend. Mm -hmm. So um, my schools may not have like the big network as the HBCUs, but I definitely learned a lot of different things. And when I had that safety and that, that creative piece, it kind of put me in a space where I was able to come up with things like this brand. So um, I, I definitely think that college is needed for a lot of people in our environment. You know, if you can stay, stay and not just go for one time. But overall, it's like you on your path and however however you want it, mm -hmm. take it. If that's that's your, um, if, you, if you think your path is to be away, then continue to be away. Don't mm -hmm. force it. Uh, don't, don't think that you have to be roots on the ground, everybody, because you got people like me. You want to make a call to figure out what's going on yeah. in town? I'm here. Yeah, and you know I also feel like so. you don't even, honestly, I feel like people should just experience college, right? Like, everybody not going to graduate. Everybody, it, and, and that's okay, but like experience. I feel like life is a lot about experience, and I feel like that's one thing I learned. Being in Trenton, I feel like I experienced it all. Like like you said, 2015 was a real dangerous year here. Like, you couldn't yeah. even really go outside for real. Like, mm -hmm. and if you was, everybody wanted to know where you was at, what you're doing, like, every minute. Mm -hmm. And like, I wanted to, it was like college was an escape, right? It's supposed to be like a safety net, like you said. Like, it was a safe place to be yourself, to figure out who you were. Being 18, 19, even 20, like, you don't know, you don't know yourself. You think you do, but you really don't. You need a space to explore yourself and things like that. Yeah. All right. So, let's transition now. Um, you just told me about your new business venture, um, the transition of you acquiring other brands mm -hmm. under under your platoon of brands that you offer so tell me a little bit about that right so 2018 2019 you know we were selling clothes even 2020 we were selling clothes wholesale we was getting doing designs it takes a lot of money to make a brand right like a lot of money and in 2021 i don't know i feel like i'm really spiritual and i felt like it was a shift it was something really just saying we need to go bigger and I started to really look in the fashion industry, and I think a lot of times, and I said this about college too, right? When you go to college, you think you only have five, six options of what, what you can be, right? Because being like from the city, I didn't even know that I could get a corporate job. Like, what, what degree was that? Like, I didn't know things like that. Even in the fashion Facts. industry, I didn't know what I could do. I thought that you could just have, you only could design clothes, right? And like, that was all you had, could be a stylist, or you could be like, that's pretty much it. So in 2021, I started doing a lot of research and I realized that like the big money was in being a retailer. Those are the Nordstrom's and the Macy's. These are companies that make 15, 16 billion dollars a year, right? And profit. Let's talk about that. Like, so I'm like, okay, what, like, why can't I do that, right? Because I love fashion, but I'm not really a good designer, but I'm a business girl. Like I'm about my money. I'm about my business. I'm a leader. So like, what can I do to collab the two? And we started to transition in 2022. It's only been like a year. It's only been a year. 
Um, and we started bringing brands on So Fashionable, and now we're up and coming retailer. Like, we are in the premium space, so a lot of the items on So Fashionable range from 100 to $900. Um, and yeah, that's what we're moving to. And really, we want to be ver a vertical brand, right? And I always think about being a vertical brand like the Disney's, right? Disney, they did movies, but they have theme parks. So you could buy Disney snacks, the characters, all that, right? It's being a vertical brand. And what's so fashionable, that's what I want to be, a vertical brand. That's where the, the real money and the generational wealth that people talk about, like, so that's where we are. That's very interesting. That's, that's, that's amazing that you got that mindset, because I actually, I watched a video that was kind of teaching me the same mindset. So mm -hmm. I wanted to expand kind of like the, the Trenton Talks um, horizon, you know. So I want to also venture into uh, movies, books, things of that sort. So it's like people often think that when you start in one lane, you have to stay in that lane. But mm -hmm. in reality, um, you know, these billion-dollar companies that you're speaking about, they just start Experiment and grabbing different you. things and grabbing I'm grabbing other you. brands. I'm telling you, buying the next brand and being like, "Hey, you want to be with me? I mean, you want to like, be with me?" Even like Gucci, right? Like Gucci owns real estate, right? And it's like it's a fashion brand, so you would not think that they own real estate. They own a lot of real estate, and or like it was Prada, and they were doing. Um, they wanted to be. They have like films coming up in the next ten years, but these are like fashion brands. So it was like, why can't I do that? But a lot of times we don't even know how to be vertical. We don't even know what that even looks like. Like, and I feel like a lot of times we in survival mode. Even when you're building a business, you're building a brand, you're in survival mode. And it's like once you get yourself out of survival mode, you can see that you could do so much other stuff, that you could be so much other stuff. Hmm. But like it takes to get out that environment, to get that mindset. Because when I left here, I didn't have that mindset. I just, it's like you, like I was a hustler, right? Like I've always been about the grind, always been about my money, like being a persistent person. But like, the elevation came from me learning a lot of things that I've learned and a lot of ways that I've acquired getting money now and like what my business has come from learning. And I feel like that's a part that people don't even realize. Talk, talk about that a little bit more. Um, <laughs> Cause you gotta, I mean, I, I've been telling my friends this cause if I gotta spend at least two to three hours on YouTube, yeah, like consistently, and when I'm not, I feel like I'm missing out. Yeah. Because it's always, like, stuff just pops up, like, yo, there's people doing this. Yeah. Somebody giving you free game about this. It's they this, is that. So. I agree. I mean, yeah. So even if you follow me on Instagram, like, I always am posting books I'm reading, I'm listening to. Like, it's so much knowledge out there. And it's like, mm -hmm. you got to get off of Instagram and stop scrolling and looking at your girl's page. Or, you know what I'm saying? That girl you ain't talked to in 20 years, but you're still stalking her. Or, like, what, what's on the shade room? Like, you got to get out. <laughs> For real, though, it's keeping our people down when it's just, like, so much information yeah, out there that so can better much. yourself. Like, yeah, I always am reading books. I'm always on YouTube. Like, I'm always on courses. Listen, if y'all go online and type in, if you, I don't know, say that you want to own a bookstore, right, and you don't know where to start, there are so many free courses on how to run a business that is free. You can get a certificate for, you know what I'm saying? So, like, I'm always in fashion courses. I am in the process of get, I'm about to go get my MBA. Like, I just want to learn so much. Oh, anyways, when I think about, like, um... Easy, like I said, talking about like taking courses and stuff like that. I listen to a lot of podcasts. I love Earn Your Leisure. Um, you ever heard of Million Dollar Mindset podcast? Mm -hmm. They're based in Texas. I watch a lot of their stuff. I listen to them all the time. And I think about even Earn Your Leisure. They did it in five, six years. You know what I'm saying? And they they break things down in a way that anybody can understand. I think that's important. It's like they're giving out free game and people don't even want to listen to it. So it's kind of like that's kind of what's wrong with the black community sometimes. Like like I said, people be in a shade room all day and night, but then earning leisure, you know what I'm saying? They have all these videos and these podcasts, and they was just saying that in a video yesterday um, on their podcast, how like they're giving out all this free game, and because it's not entertaining enough, people don't tune into it, but they give so much knowledge away. Yeah, and um, I think that's kind of add to our, our previous conversation mm -hmm. off the camera where we was talking about whether people don't know What's out there? When we were talking about grants, business loans, just information. If you don't know, mm -hmm. can you hold that person accountable in this environment full of information? Yes and no, right? Because sometimes when people don't know, once again, being in your environment, right, and you in survival mode, do you even have the mindset to even try to think and look 
for those resources, right? When you're trying to figure out how to, where your next meal coming from or how I could pay these bills, like, can you even get yourself out that mindset to even be like, all right, I want to start this business. What can I do? What should I Google? What, who can I talk to? Like, can you even think and process that? A lot of times you can't when you're in survival mode. Like, you can't even, no, really. tr- you can't even try to even think the possibilities of what you can become because you're so busy worried about today. Yeah, that's a fact. Um, and it's like, I feel like a lot of times, like, that's where empathy comes in. And I feel yeah. like there is a lot of resources, but, like, how can we make ourselves more available? And, like, even when I think about, like, HBCUs, like, I started a nonprofit called HBCUs First because a lot of times we have all these HBCUs that kids don't know about. They know about the popular five, but those are the most expensive five. What about, like, the Cheneys and the Lincolns, right? Those is down the street from here. But, yeah. like... We don't even know nothing about that or how we could get in touch to even go and visit. How can we get scholarships? Like, we don't know. We don't know. And I think about even taking loans out, right? Like, I took loans out to go to Hampton. And I always, I used to think it was my biggest mistake, right? Because, like, I was 18, signing my, my life away, right? And, like, I, I, you sign your life away. You signed the uh, 360 you, deal. You really are. Like, I signed a 360 <laughs> deal. And I'd be looking at them loans like, I don't even trip about them because, like, I'm going to pay them off. Like, I, ain't, I don't worry about stuff like that no more. But, like, being 18, signing your life away, and you don't even know what it really entails. Like, your parents don't know. You know what I'm saying? Like, they think they know, but they really don't know what interest is going to look like, what kind of job you're going to get. So it's also like, once again, I'm still in survival mode because now I got these loans and I can't even dream no more. Like, you know, like I can't even dream because I got this 360 on my back and now I got to figure out how to pay this off. So now I got to work two, three jobs to pay the loans, to pay the bills. I, I can't I can't have a business. I can't have a brand. I can't do nothing, have no hobbies, nothing like that when I'm in survival mode. And it's just like, once again... People don't know about the resources, but they don't even have, they can't even think about them. Do you think this is how the world is set up as far as capitalism? I mean, I think black, I think yes. And I think that like, obviously black people were never meant to to thrive, but like, of course we are. Like odds against a lot of, a lot of us and we still are thriving, you and me included. And I think that there's a lot more resources now to help, you know, even with the odds against us. The internet is is the best tool in the world, right? Yes, like, it is. It's the best tool in the world. It was the best thing that ever happened. Like, when you ask, even us growing up, I was just telling this girl this. Like, we grew up when we had, like, Walkmans. Like, I remember being in fourth grade having a Walkman. Kids now don't even know that. Like, they go on YouTube and they, and they learn stuff. They... They watched videos for days on YouTube, but like I remember having a Walkman. I remember we had no social media. I remember when I was begging my mom for a phone, and my phone just you could only text and call on there, right? Like, <laughs> and it's just like now you got the world at your hands. So like, what you doing with it? Yeah. Like, what you doing with it? It's, it's so much power, yet so much responsibility. You know, it's it's so easy to like beat yourself up. Like, yo, I could have got rich. I just seen somebody make a million off e-commerce, yeah. and it's like. It's it's easy to beat yourself up and, or it's easy to like, you know, just be completely uh, negligent to the possibilities. I, I feel agree. like that's easy. That's either the, the two, you know, areas you're in or you're overworking yourself and comparing yourself to these yeah. people that's blowing up. And I so, don't even believe in stuff like that you no know, more. Like blowing, like comparing yourself or like when you go online and somebody made a million dollars. I don't believe in stuff like that. I used to. Like, I used to, you know, compare myself. I used to, like, be like, dang, she's 25 and she made three right? Right. Uh, three meals. Like, mm-hmm. and I, if anybody who really knows me knows that Nipsey Hustle is my spirit animal. Like, I've been a Nipsey fan since I was, like, 2017. And one thing that I realized and learned was that, like, he and he always would say this, you can make a million today, right? But, like, 10 years from now, you got that million still? You know what I'm saying? It's a lot of rappers that was that was rich in, in it, shoot, 2010, Fetty Wap was rich in 2010, 2015. Now he in jail and he broke. Like, yeah. so stuff like that, I, the comparing, I can't even do because it's a lot of people that's rich today and broke tomorrow. Yeah, I definitely agree. But it seems like a lot of people suffer from this, like after the social media boom. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, comparing wasn't, as big of a thing. I'm sure we've always been a competitive people. Yeah. But as far as the social media self-esteem, especially with these kids, I yeah. see kids, kids, yeah. all them who can't post a picture because it's not enough. Yeah. 14, 
15, 16, 17, like we was dropping anything. Like, yeah, ah, I'm was. outside. Post, posted anything. <laughs> they can't post a picture. They can't. Because it's, it's not enough to them. It's so not. it's like. And even let's, and let's not, please don't get me started on like the luxuries, right? Like the luxuries and like you got to wear the designer and stuff like that. Being yeah. in the fashion industry and building a luxury, a premium luxury brand in that space, it don't matter. And it's like, I wish that we could, especially as black people, it's funny because I always, I'm really like data driven. Like I look at the numbers, I see what it's saying. It's like black people where they, they call us like these, um, basically people who admire luxuries, but we really can't afford it. Right. Like we'll buy the Birkin bags, we'll buy the Louis bags, but like we really are not their target audience because we can't afford it. We will spend our last dollar buying that Louis bag. And then next month we try to look at how our bills get paid. Like. And our kids are behind on their education, but like, I got that Prada bag, you know what I'm saying? Wearing them Prada shoes, but that's important. And it's like, but it's it's us. Like yeah. the average black household is only worth like $20,000 and the average white household is worth a million dollars. That's a problem. Like, and it's just like, once again, though, social media, I go on social media, she got a Prada bag, so she must be doing good in life, right? Like, but like, he ain't wearing designer, so he ain't got no money. That's the world we live in and that's the comparison and like, that's the biggest issue. That's what keeps us down as a people. I should be a preacher, y'all. Let me just say that right now. Because it's it's like, like I said, when you experience life and you start just going out, like, I don't live in Trenton anymore. I live in D.C. And D.C. is a very prominent black young professional space. And I see a lot of young professionals. These are people who are under 30 that could be making $200,000, right? And, like, they are not the flashiest people, but they are wealthy when it comes to mind being like the mindset and I've learned so much just getting out of Trenton but like social media it's just I don't know I don't take it that serious anymore like I'm doing like a six month like social media hiatus because I feel like you can get distracted like I go on Instagram and I'm scrolling what am I even looking at right you know what I'm saying what, what am I looking at I got a team now and my team posts on so fashionable so like what am I on social media for if I'm not helping people if I'm not using it to motivate people what am I doing on here while well, I'm looking at your life what you like looking at your life gonna do for me? Exactly. Nothing. It's not gonna do nothing for me. But like, it's about that mindset. It's about getting out the environment because once again, when you, when I go to Trent, I do. I, I come here every once in a while. I went to a party during the summer, and everybody had bust downs on. You know what I'm saying? The Armani <laughs> jeans, all of that. And I'm like, damn, like, what's going on? Like, what's been up? You know, nothing. What you mean nothing? Like, what you what you been doing? Nothing. But you got Armani jeans on. Okay. All right. Okay. And that's a problem. That's a problem in the black community. Once again, that's still about being in survival mode that we got to compare ourselves that like, I got to show, I got, I need something to show for it. A lot of times we feel like we got to, we need something to show. And I get it because like we are already 500 years behind, right? Like uh, our counterparts, we're 500 years behind. So we got to show something. I'm, I got a, a stable living, you know what I'm saying? I got a little house or apartment. I need to show people that I work, I'm working, like I, I'm doing something great. But it's just like our counterparts don't do that. But like we have, we feel like we have to. That's deep, man. You, you hit my spirit right now. But nah, this is this is what we see. Like you 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 talking about it, like I I'm here. Like I see it every day, you know, and I see He's like, what can you do about it? What the can you mindsets. Do about that? I mean, this is what we're doing now. Yeah. This is why we um showing people like you, you know, the the young ladies coming up. You know, I got a lot of, you know, sisters and cousins that are female, so I'm always looking to show um, positive female mm -hmm. role models. You know, I'm not going to say it's not that many before they cancel me, but <laughs> but you know, like, this is a part of the change, you know, trying to get that information out, so. Yeah. Um, big shout out to you, everything you're doing. This is like a checkpoint. You know, we, we worked before, um, early on. Like I said, um, Autumn, Autumn made Trent Talks. Like, <laughs> she literally was like, Yo, are you going to make a page? I'm like, I'm eventually make it. She's like, all right, I made the page. Just the password. Here's the logo. <laughs> I'm like, what? That's, yeah, I mean, because the people need it, right? Like yeah, so it's like, and look look now, you know, five years later. So it's just, like, I, I see your power, you know what I mean? I see your impact. And that's why I'm like, I'm not ashamed to give people their flowers because this is something that was built by all of us, you know? Yeah. Like, all of us seeing the visions and seeing the impact that we all can make and will make together, you know. So, um, once again, I'm proud of you. Like, let's keep the marathon rolling and just, just continue continue to keep it going because 
these are checkpoints. Like I look at trying talks like a history book, you know, mm -hmm. the new the new form. It's, it's the new textbooks. So they could go down yeah. and they'll be able to see everything from 2018 till now. And then mm -hmm. they'll see what, what we end up doing five years from now. Come on this now. Is, this is just the beginning, for real. It's just real. the beginning. And that's why they need to shop so fashionable. You know what I'm saying? This is the beginning. This is the beginning. I'm never home, but I'm always repping. All right. Tell them um, your ads. Tell them where they can find you. Um, um, you can always find me Instagram. I'm on TikTok, Twitter, everything at... Alt, which is A-U-T, Ellison, E-L-L-I-S-O-N. And you can find me on So Fashionable. That's S-O-F-V-S-H-I-O-N-A-B-L-E.com or on Instagram. All right. And y'all know who it is. So we out of here. It's the story of... Um, how old you is now? <laughs> I ain't saying my age on camera. Come on now. Not too much. Not too much. Man. All right. It's, <laughs> a it's a story of a high school friend um, in 2018... She was already in the creative space. Mm -hmm. um, she was already pushing her brand. She seen me making videos, and she decided to make me a page and say, you need to make Trenton Talks. So this is how our stories intertwine. Mm -hmm. I've known Mama Lou since he was in seventh grade, since I was in seventh grade. I remember he was at Moody Park, and he would be screaming out there, y'all. All right. <laughs> podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I actually have real stories. <laughs> 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 Always harass people out there. <laughs> Are you going